of Ekiti State, Biodu Yibanji's midterm scorecard is marked by significant efforts to implement his six-point agenda which focuses on job creation, human capital development, agriculture and rural development, infrastructure and industrialization, art, culture and tourism, as well as governance. Since assuming office on October the 16th, 2022, Mr. Yibanji has made no various sectors. In infrastructure development, his administration has prioritized road construction, public buildings, and upgrade of healthcare facilities. The agriculture and rural development sector has also received attention with initiatives aimed at boosting food production, empowering farmers, and promoting rural development. Also, his government has launched programs focused on youth empowerment and education, demonstrating his commitment to human capital development. Healthcare has also seen significant improvements with the inauguration of the Southwest Inner Public Health Laboratory, enhancing the state's capacity to tackle health challenges. What more should residents in Ikiti State expect from this administration? Joining us in the studio is Ikiti State's Special Advisor and Director General, Office of Transformation and Service Delivery, Dr. John Ekundaya. Good morning. It's good to have you join us. Uh, well, from what we have read so far, so good. But there are those who would say, uh, why are we perhaps taking a midterm scorecard at this point? Why is it necessary to give a scorecard and all of it? Well, um, when we talk about scorecard in monitoring, evaluation, and learning, uh, of course, we are learning every day. Mm. Uh, we are taught that we need to set my uh, even though you need to set overarching goals, uh, you look at wide range of objectives. But then, at a certain time, you need to set some milestone for yourself. One year, what will I accomplish out of four years? Mm -hmm. That's 25% down the line. When we talk about midterm, we are talking about like 50%. Mm -hmm. And really, in, re in, in governance and politics in Nigeria, uh, when you come to two years of a four year term, <laughs> it's actually more than midterm because uh, the last nine months of the administration, mostly is in, in politicking. Uh, it, it, you know, mostly. I'm not saying that all the time we're politicking. So for midterm, it's good to assess and look back. Oh, how have I fear? I set an agenda. Like in the state, there are six strategic actionable pillars of the administration. Mm -hmm. Talking about, uh, you know, uh, uh, about uh, job creation, youth, youth uh, engagement, youth development, job creation, talking about human capital development, talking about uh, agriculture and rural development, talking about art, culture, tourism, talking about infrastructure and industrialization, talking about governance, you know, these six pillars. You know, it's good to look back two years, from 16th of October 2022 to date, how has the government fared? And that's what we do in OTSD, in Office of Transformation and Service Delivery. We look at all this uh, 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 agenda. We look at it one by one. You know, how are we, not just in the office, we go out, we conduct surveys, we take mm. it to people, you know, uh, up to about two or three times now, the central district level. We have, you know, been feeling the impact. In fact, we did that about one year back or so, about nine months back. And then we, we quickly reported, even presenting our Tesco so that we need to now fill the gap. Mm. So it's still good to look at it. And that's part of the morning, uh, monitoring, evaluation, and learning, the learning leg in, in May. You see, because when you, when, you, when, when you look at that, that's what we call lesson learned. Mm. You can now go back and see where you are misdotting your eyes, where you are miscrossing your teeth, and there's still time. You know, to dot the eyes. Uh, and are the there positives. areas where the, the governor perhaps have missed the dots in the eyes and crossing the T's, uh, especially from the feelers you got from the people? Yes, when we, when we went out about, um, about, about nine months back, I know people were saying, in our culture, for instance, we, we don't know what the government is doing. You see, you know, when you are building a house, you know, I happen to be a civil engineer, you see, and you are doing foundation, you see, and if it's a Anyway, you see, by the time you are French digging and digging, you know, people will be wondering what is happening here. And that was what was happening in the last one year. You know, we were trying to set some policy in place so that it will not just be uh, something that uh, uh, will not be sustainable.
So now we can see, like the governor on the 1st of October, the Independence Day, he was out, you know, and I was part of that team. Uh, I actually am glad that I was part of that team that tore farmlands in the uh, Ikere, you know, Emure, Eporu, and the Aramako, you know. And at a, at a particular point, we got to Aramako, and the road was not passable, mm. you know. And it, it happened that Mr. Governor said, I'm going. Governor Ivanji said, I'm going. If it comes to climbing Okada, I will do. And, and he did. He did. Mm. You know, it was on the social media. Mm. He got to that farm. He met the young farmers. You know, we are bringing the youths back okay. into farming right. in Ekiti. And this is not media hype. You see, in fact, uh, for, he, he, the governor is saying, okay, you journalists, come with the ESCO members. Go and look at this farm and see where about almost 1,000 youths are brought into agriculture so that it won't just be for food security. They are also engaged. And then we are looking next year. That's our focus next year for oh, wow. food, I mean, yes. for agribusiness mm -hmm. and for welfare of the people. Interesting. See? So these are the things that we are setting the path when we talk about share prosperity. It won't just come like that, but through a process. Mm -hmm. And we are in that process. Okay, so we just want to believe that all of this is not a flash in the pan. It has to be sustainable because mm -hmm. it's still a plan in the progress. But if you look at um, Governor Yobanji, his administration has been praised you know, for um, being one of the best states for ease of doing business. But how, do you, how would you assess the broader economic impact of this on the revenue generation and also um, attracting new businesses? Because if you look at states in Nigeria, they've been criticized for always looking up to the federal government for allocations and all of that. So how much do you think they're doing to shore up the revenue generation and also attract more businesses? Thank you, Ibrahim, for that question. Uh, actually, uh, when we say part to share prosperity, you know, like I said, I was saying before, you know, it's a process, you see, and when you get the process right, then you are sure to have increased IGR, and, you know, of course, you have increased production, and that's what equity government are setting, especially in agribusiness, in, in, in uh, all these farm settlement, and uh, when we talk about IGR, uh, when Governor Ibanji came into power, 16th of October, 2022, Ekiti IGR was around 600 million or so per month. But right now, I can tell you. So it has never been in billions? Yes. Right now, Ekiti is 1.5 billion per month. So it's not just that, you know, we are looking up to Abuja, you know, for revenue generation, you know, I mean, for, for FAC allocation mm. every month. Even within, it has doubled and it's on the path of increase. And we have not come to the end of the year yet. And there are some other things that are set up. Like we are, we are having the uh, land use charge, which will be activated very soon. The governor has also already met with the stakeholders and sensitized them, and the stakeholders are willing. And uh, with that, because they can see the good works mm. being done, we can see uh, pensioners, you know, like, like on Saturday, just two days back, it, what has not happened before. You know, the governor gave $3.5 billion for gratuity payment for, for pensioners. And they were all happy. And about two months ago, he gave out one billion again mm. to clear the backlog because there have been backlog from previous administrations. He is not saying where well, it was not my government. So let me commence from where I started the government. You know, he believes in government of continuity. And you know, this is the good part. So right now, for IGR, we are moving up and we are not stopping. You see, because one thing we believe in the KT is that we need not just to be ambitious, we need to be audacious. Mm. So we set high, high mark. So right. the, the, it wouldn't be a challenge then for the state government to pay the minimum wage because that's the critical issue at this point. <laughs> well, I'm just uh, laughing to that because Mr. Governor, uh, you know, is is a weirdest, uh, weirdest governor, mm -hmm. and he has already made things about that. And I'm I'm sure maybe that will be part of uh, a state of the state address on Wednesday when this administration. We be two years in office, we'll be addressing the House of Assembly by law. It has been established for any governor during every year of, uh, you know, like first year, second year, third year. You need to give a state of the state address to the House of Assembly and for them to come back. So that's part of our check and balances in equity to see that we are on track. Mm. So I believe that will come even from Mr. Governor. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, something positive will come. So the workers, they are actually eager and they are very keen and very supportive. They have been supportive and kudos to equity workers all along. You see, we have not been involved in any protests. 
in the mm. kitty. Mm. Is it because they could see the welfare, welfareism heart, you know, of our governor in, in governance, and this has largely uh, uh, imparted uh, uh, you know, a kind of um, um, elicited a kind of cooperation between the workforce and the government in the Kitty State. Mm. Mm. So the people should uh, wait till Wednesday to hear from the governor then. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to push it, so <laughs> let me leave it there. All right, All right so um, I'm actually keen on um, your or the, the government's position on, because before you came uh, into the studio, we talked about local government autonomy, mm. following the Supreme Court's judgment and all of that. Uh, and then uh, the state government uh, has actually been one of those states criticized for not granting full autonomy to the local government because of the management of funds, you know, due to the constitutional provision of the JAC, where a pool of alloc I mean, allocation is actually pulled in one certain uh, account, the joint account allocation. Uh, how much do you think the government of the state is allowing the local government to, you know, fester in terms of delivering good governance to the poorest of the poor and the underserved communities? Um, I think maybe you need to check back again because uh, prior to even the federal government coming and the Supreme Court judgment, you know, according to Nogi, and you can Google that, you know, according to Nogi, a kitty state is one of the states that was excused from the blame game. You see, because right from the inception of the administration of Biodon and Bayou Mibaji Bao, on 16th of October, he has said, well, local government fund, I'm not touching local government fund. But they still maintain the same account. I don't, I don't disagree that there's jack, because, you know, they put the money there. But for, we don't even do any program between local government and state. It's not in any record. Whether you look at our budget, you look online, and normally, Ekiti State has gotten a work for transparency. So if you click our website, Ekiti State uh, Government, you see all this thing there. So uh, for us in Ekiti, the judgment is in good light, and uh, we are okay with that. And you know, we have local government elections. So we are not part of the state just rushing to do local government elections so that we can assess, <laughs> so that the local government will assess their phone. So I, d I don't think we have, Ekiti State has any issue with local government, uh, rather. It's just that we put things in proper perspective and you know, follow the law as it is. So mm. that is the government because people now can hold them accountable mm. you know, than before and say, okay, we want to see what you are doing. Like the governor was just involved. I was involved with the governor in a budget stakeholder meeting. Mm. We were in the three centurial district. Uh, we are in, we in, in Aramako, mm. we were in Elawe, we were in uh, Faki, you know, for all the three centurial district. And you know, people were presenting their, uh, their, their, what they want, the agitation. And I was telling them, certain things before we used to do together, but now this is for the local government. But for this one, it's for the state. So that's quite clear. Okay. So. Uh, well, let's look at uh, perhaps infrastructure development. Uh, particularly interesting to me is the story about how the governor insisted on taking a bike because of the state of the road. So is that part of his plan <laughs> to, to develop? Not taking that. back next time. Uh, <laughs> yes. Okay, so you can drive, drive, <laughs> drive his vehicle. Uh, Veronica, I love your perspective. You see, I love your perspective. You know, prior to our getting to that place, the public or corporation has actually moving. Uh, you know, but you know what? That place was about 12 kilometers to the main road. Mm. I myself, and it is indigent, I didn't know that we could have farmland in such a place. Mm -hmm. In fact, when we, were, when we went to Epo, that was Aramako area. Mm -hmm. Now, when we went to Eporo, Eporo is, that's for this distance I'm talking about now from the Eporo to Aramako, that should be about 20, 30 kilometers. Mm -hmm. That of Eporo to, we went inside for another 15 kilometers. Mm -hmm. That's a visual in, on uh -huh. the screen. It's, if we didn't go to this area, and I was surprised, you know, in, in a place we cross stream, in some places the vehicle could not even go. So, but Aramako was impossible because there was every day that day. Mm -hmm. You know, public works corporation are moving, they were clearing, they have been giving charge. Aramako is a prominent locality. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, from that main road, where the farm is located, it's about 12 kilometers inside cocoa trees and all the rest. Mm -hmm. okay. So, PwC, the public work corporation of the state, had to clear the way, mm -hmm. but then there was a heavy downpour. So, well, okay. But is the government looking in that now direction? Now, he has already said mm -hmm. all these farm settlements. Roads will be constructed. Right. So, and not just that, just like I will all this, there will be hostess for them, dormitories for them, there will be security posts for them. 
So we are going back mm. to the whole law of farm settlement mm. days in Ekiti. Yeah, I said that openly. And that is the, that's the way to go. And the same way for communities. Mm. We were the stakeholder bu uh, budget engagement. So look, oh, traditional rulers, I'm appealing to you. All I need is just tell us to come and clear your land. And for what? It's free. Mm. Land clearing is free. So we are having more than 1,000 youth engaged now, up to about 1,000 youth engaged in farming now. And more are still coming. Because for the focus of his administration next year, He's saying it's going to be basically agribusiness, you know, and welfare of the people. Mm -hmm. So I believe uh, we can uh, uh, do much more. Uh, and then for infrastructure, yes. you know, you, it's, not, it's not just the rural infrastructure. We have the RAM being supported by the World Bank, rural, agri marketing, you know, constructing roads presently. Mm -hmm. the, the, the target is to get 1,000 kilometer roads. Now, we are not yet there, but How we are on the track. Yeah, well, this year, just July, about 13 roads were awarded, you know, to, with the, with, because it's a counterpart for anything. We pay our own side, and World Bank is doing that. And they are monitoring that. So it's not mm. something you say, I will do, and you are not doing. And it's time bound. Mm. So we did some last year. We are doing some now, this year, again. So it's going on. And apart from that, we have roads that will be commissioned for this uh, second anniversary. We are doing the township road within the uh, township, mm. the Kodi township road. And you know other roads, and there are other roads that are ongoing in the state. And you know what the difference between past administration and now? Because I'm a civil engineer, I can attest to this. We go on project monitoring. We are building standard roads for the first time in Ekiti. Mm -hmm. Now we are having stone-based cars. We are having wearing cars. We are having all this as supposed to be, and drains. We are doing supposed to be. So. The roads, according to even the Commissioner for Works, and which I can attest to as an engineer, mm -hmm. is road that can last for minimum of 10 years. So mm -hmm. we can construct, and then we are coming another time and construct more. Be before you know it, we we'll just go back another five, seven, eight years. We are just doing little routine maintenance mm -hmm. because we are building lasting roads now. It's not roads that you just put asphalt That's or right. just put uh, uh, a bitumen. Mm -hmm. And after one year, you know, of rainy season. I, I love the fact done. that you've actually touched on so many things, security, infrastructure, which you asked you, mm -hmm. and other things. Um, I'm looking at, you said AKT was not part of those who staged protests. I'm wondering whether because of level of urban migration, because most of the youths in different parts of the, the country, some of them have moved to Lagos, others from Lagos to um, outside of the country. Oh. And yeah, you know, brain drain and all of that. Maybe that could be. So I wanted to speak to that. One, and secondly, um, what about tourism? What are you doing about tourism in the mm. state? We have the Aero Dam, we have the Faji Memorial Park, we have the Kogosi Dam, we have the the other one. one okay, Kogosi Warm Spring. Yes, and, the Kogosi Warm Spring. Yes. Resort. It's now and, a resort. It's now a resort. Yeah. So, I, you know, and so on and so forth. So yeah. what are you doing uh, yeah. to make sure that youth stay back, one, and then, you know, ensuring uh, that tourism is well attractive? Thank you, Ibrahim. I agree about uh, rural or band drift, you know, it's happening anywhere. You see, but you see, there are still some youth that stay back in the kitchen. In fact, some are coming from the capital city. You know what? Because they are making money on the farm now. Mm. Let me tell you, as, as I left Lagos, I have not less than three hectares of farmland now mm. near my hometown. Mm. You know, and I don't, let me tell you, I, don't, I would just want to come and spend my money in Lagos after. I don't want to stay in Lagos anymore. <laughs> of course, I've retired from Lagos. Does everyone season. have access to you know, farmlands? No, 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 I, have access. I could just come and enjoy my money. I'll make money. That's what happened in Malaysia. Okay. I say three years in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Most people stay in the rural areas, yeah. make their money, and they come to the city yeah. to spend their money, enjoy their money, and go back. Yeah. Now, so they are big guys. Yes, they are big guys. <laughs> and that's it. So <laughs> even youth are coming. <laughs> youth are coming from the city to Ekiti now. Okay. Now, with the other question on tourism, yeah. which is very important, you see, uh, Ekongo is a warm uh, uh, springs. Now it's warm resorts. You know, is we, we have a, a five star, a five star kind of this thing there that people can come from every walk of life and come there. And the roads are good now. People will say road to Ekiti. No, no, when you are coming from Malaysia, you, you either come to Waraja, there to Efanla, to Ekongo, or Baraoke, Elisha, Baraoke. And then you link because that road in the last one, two years have been made good strategically by this government so that. People can assess it it's better, you know. And then what you find, even you find modern cuisine in Congo. I've been there. Mm. I can't test, you know. And, uh, and we slept over there. So uh, you have large halls. So we are having that. And then we want to have a boat, uh, boat cruise in Egiti. And you'll be wondering, is Egiti Lagos? We don't have a lagoon. But 
we have Bureji River around Adwekiti, mm. and we want to have a boat, a boat cruise there. We are talking on, already with a, an investor who is coming to invest money. You know, it's not even taking a dime from the state government. Mm. Mm. So possibly by Easter, we have something like that. So for tourism, we are, we, we are, we are blessing the tree. And the DJ that's there, Ambassador Wale Ujulari, who happened to be a journalist, is doing well, relatively well in that. And uh, about art and culture, you are not even asking about that. About we are all winning arts and culture. Oh, arts and culture. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's part of tourism. It's yes, tourism. we have gone to Brazil. We won an award first for Nigeria. And the only officer is even saying, I love this truth because they perform at the festival. I say, and I want to take you to Brazil. Mm -hmm. So, you know, on all the six cardinal or whatever, not the six uh, uh, strategic actionable pillars. There are things to actually uh, clean, I mean, and tick. But I'm not saying we are there yet. Mm. We still have some things to come in, like Absolutely. industrialization. Mm. You see, we want to take our Greek from just agriculture That's right. to processing, production, mm. packaging, and to export. Interesting, changed. because yeah. Yeah. one more issue that I'd like for you to address is what more should the people expect, one, and how is he addressing the matter of out-of-school children? Yeah, um, we are not sitting on our own as in a kitty. You know, out of school children, uh, where, when you look at the states where it's least in Nigeria, a kitty is number two that is least. Is it because but, of the population? <laughs> <laughs> not really. Is it, but you know, that the only thing we have as industry that people know us for in a kitty is education. Mm -hmm. Is it hardly when you see somebody that, you know, your, your, your child will just sit down at home at school age? So we are even putting it on the airwaves and say, well, let your children go to school. We also want to do more. Right. And you know, our public school, primary and secondary, free in equity. So, and you know, we are all our ministers of education, a superb, you know, encouraging parents, even special children. You know, the government, the government, the government is saying now, don't keep them at home because our special schools are one of the best in the, in the federation. You know, when you, when our government is doing bad, they say, don't give me anything. Just go to my friends who are special people, the special schools, go and donate to them. And while they are the one at Ito, the other time, you know, beddings, all the dormitory, you know, everywhere so fine. Because we have just a few seconds okay. more, what should the people expect? <coughs> what more should the people expect quickly? Yes, quickly in the next year, and as we round up the administration, people should expect more of food security negative. And also, not just food security, even security of the state as a whole, uh, you know, and also the welfare of the people. So when you are talking about minimum wage, I know the governor will do, <laughs> and not just about wage is not for people away. who are working, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about people who are working, but what of other people, because he used to say, how many of us are even earning wages? Mm -hmm. What of other ikitikete who mm -hmm. are not earning wages? So he has asked for the people. That's why you have the, wid the, 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 the widows and orphan whole project run by the, by, by the first lady, Our Excellency Olayemi and uh, we have the Ujushi Bao too, is he giving uh, uh, all these kinds of this thing, social right. this thing, support to the people, yeah. you know, mm. to abate poverty. Okay. We'll have to leave the conversation here, and thank you, Ekiti State Special Advisor and Director General Office of Transformation and Service Delivery, Dr. John Ekundayo, for your time on the program. Thank you.